Here are some of the craziest pyramid schemes that people fell for. Find out just exactly how emus actually became part of a giant scam. Number 9. Pastor Hibbert Former Pastor Marlon Hibbert and his wife Verna ran an $8.6 million Ponzi scheme by tricking members of their own church. They got their congregation to invest a minimum of $10,000 for a guaranteed 8.5% return on their investment. How did they actually make that return? They didn't. They paid the returns with new cash they got from new investors. You know, the good old-fashioned textbook pyramid scheme. They didn't invest the money and showed fake returns to anyone looking to invest. Toronto police did a financial audit and found that roughly 200 people gave them $8.6 million. The Hibberts used that money to bankroll an extravagant lifestyle. They bought cars, a huge house, and expensive trips while their victims watched their retirement go down in flames. Some people even lost their homes because they invested everything. The victims said they believed their money was safe because Mr. Hibbert was a pastor. Number 8. Latex Gloves in 2014, a guy by the name of Deepal Wanakuate was charged with operating a Ponzi scheme that took in more than $230 million. Wanakuate was able to convince investors that they had a massive government contract. He ran two companies, International Manufacturing Group and Relay Aid. He misled investors into thinking that he had a massive contract with the United States Department of Veteran Affairs. He told investors his companies had contracts worth more than $100 million a year selling the government latex gloves. Of course, Wanakuate had false documents and relationships to show investors. He had fake tax returns, overstating income, fake corporate documents, and he even had a fake veteran affairs representative. Number 7. Lou Perlman Do you remember Lou Perlman? Lou Pearlman was the mastermind behind boy bands such as Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and the mastermind of huge Ponzi schemes, but we'll get into that in just a minute. The Backstreet Boys and NSYNC dominated the late 90s and early 2000s. Pearlman became sort of a music mogul and he created other boy bands such as LFO and Take 5. However, things went south for him when the Backstreet Boys filed a lawsuit against him. Each band member was only paid $300,000 for their work, while Perlman made millions. But this was the least of his worries because he was running huge Ponzi schemes. In 2006, federal prosecutors found out that he had cheated investors out of more than $300 million through a fake company he pretended to own. He used a company called Transcontinental Airlines in order to lure investors into giving him a ton of money for over 20 years. After investors began getting suspicious, he went on the run across the world. He was finally apprehended in Germany in 2007. He pleaded guilty to his crimes and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. In a bizarre interview in 2014, Perlman actually bragged that his Ponzi scheme was better than Bernie Madoff's. Number 6. New Skin if you ever encounter a multi-level marketing company, always ask if it's a scam. Even the Federal Trade Commission has looked intensely at the operation at Newskin. Technically, multi-level marketing is a legitimate business model, but most people that get into it lose money. We're talking literally 99% of people. This is a number the government themselves estimated. It goes like this. Newskin gets new recruits. They get the recruits to buy Newskin products with promises of a lot of money and the recruits are supposed to sell it to anyone they can. That and get other people to sign on to sell more new skin products. But ultimately, the people that buy the most products are the recruits themselves. New Skin Enterprises is still operating today, but the company has had many issues. Back in the 90s, the company was investigated by the US government and had to pay out a series of fines in 1992, 1994, and 1997. Even the Chinese government sued the company. In 2014, Newskin agreed to pay $47 million in a settlement to the Chinese government. Although companies such as Newskin may not technically be pyramid schemes, they might as well be. What do you think? Speaking of Newskin, we might as well get into... Number 5. Herbalife 
This company is another multi-level marketing company that markets and sells dietary supplements. But since its beginning in 1980, the company had been plagued by legal problems. They're just like New Skin, except their scale is even bigger. Herbalife's critics say all the company does is exploit poor people by getting them to pay thousands of dollars for products the company knows they won't be able to sell. They claim that the company purposely tricks people with dreams of getting rich quickly. In 2012, hedge fund manager Bill Ackman investigated Herbalife and concluded that they're running a very sophisticated pyramid scheme. By his estimate, low-level distributors of Herbalife lost around $3.5 billion a year. Herbalife denied this, but they decided to settle a class auction lawsuit in 2014 in the amount of $6 million anyway. As part of the agreement, the company admitted no fault. In 2016, the Federal Trade Commission said that it's virtually impossible to make money as a Herbalife representative. Number 4. Sundown Entertainment Sundown Entertainment was a comic book company that somehow scammed almost $4 million from unsuspecting people. Daniel Perilli, John Lauer, and Christopher Anderson had actually already all been in prison together before running this Ponzi scheme. These guys were all white-collar criminals serving time for various financial crimes. Obviously, they weren't rehabilitated when they had gotten out. When they got out, they formed a company called Sundown Entertainment. They claimed to be buying and selling the rights to films and comic books. They sold more than $7 million and essentially stocked their company to approximately 150 investors. They lured investors of returns of anywhere from 25% to 100% profit in as little as seven days. Why didn't the investors do any due diligence on these guys? Sundown Entertainment obviously weren't making any deals and investors lost their money. All three of them were all sent back to prison once they were caught. Number 3. Telex Free Labor Rosario was a guy who thought that hiding $17 million underneath his bed was a good hiding place. And that money was obtained from one of the biggest Ponzi schemes ever through a company called Telex Free. Telex Free was a company started in 2012 that was supposed to be providing an internet-based phone service that allowed free calls between Brazil and Latin America. The company brought in millions from investors who paid money to post online ads in exchange for a future return on investment. The company basically took the money and just told the investors to recruit more people into the scam. Needless to say, no product or service was actually sold. The scheme collapsed in 2014 after Telex Free eventually got around $3 billion from almost 2 million people. Co-founder James Merrill was arrested. His partner in crime, Carlos Wanzeller, fled to Brazil. However, Wanzeller left a good bit of cash behind, so he sent Rosario back to Massachusetts where the money was hidden. Things didn't go as planned and Rosario was arrested by police. He decided to cooperate with officials, so he took them to Wanzeller's apartment where they easily found the cash. Number 2. Susie Emu Farms Who comes up with a way to scam thousands of people of roughly $50 million? A guy named M.S. Guru who owned Susie Emu Farms. Authorities had to deal not only with the thousands of victims, but they also had to deal with the estimated 100,000 emus abandoned when the scheme collapsed. Back in 2006, this guru guy got the brilliant idea to make money off unsuspecting investors with emus. He marketed emus as a great opportunity with multiple revenue opportunities by selling emu eggs, emu meat, and emu oil. Except there was no actual business plan by them. His company offered investors the promise of a steady income in return for raising an emu chick. The uh, long story short is that people gave money and were given an actual emu chick to raise. But all the company did was just take in more money from more investors and they had no plan to do anything with the emus. More and more people decided to hop on the scheme and even other companies got in on the scam. The emus just kept piling up all over. Thousands of Indians chose to invest with Susie Emu Farms. Many people mortgaged their house or dipped into their savings to increase their investment. This crazy emu Ponzi scheme finally fell apart almost six years later in 2012. Roughly $50 million were taken from some 12,000 investors. Investigators began looking into charges against five major firms, the worst of which was Susie Emu Farms, founded by the original mastermind MS Guru. Number 1. OneCoin OneCoin was a money heist that took billions of dollars from investors between 2014 and 2018. 
The brains behind this scheme was Ruja Ignatova. Although the U.S. government previously estimated OneCoin's take at $4 billion, there are sources that claim the worldwide take was as much as $15.8 billion as of early 2018. We're not going to go too deep into it, but if you want to find out all the details, be sure to check it out here in this video. What made OneCoin so attractive to investors? It was its viral, commission-driven structure again. It was sold to many vulnerable individuals such as members of the working class in England and South Asia. This scam quickly became one of the biggest the world has ever seen. OneCoin grew to 10 million, then quickly to 20 million, then 30 million, and it just quickly snowballed into the billions. And with all the publicity stunts and all the investor money rolling in, one day Ruja just disappeared. Even more amazingly, even after Ruja was officially charged, people continued to invest in the coin. Despite all the evidence, investors simply just didn't want to miss out on the next big thing. Here's what's next.